Hello, everyone, and welcome to SBR Videos. I'm sports handicapper Ian Cameron. I'm flying solo today. My partner in crime, Peter Loshak, away on vacation. It's not that he got sick of me. It's because he's on vacation. So it'll just be us today talking MLB overnight lines for the games taking place on Wednesday, April the 20th. We're going to look forward to some of the matchups that are taking place tomorrow uh, on Wednesday uh, in Major League Baseball action. Uh, op- overnight lines really starting to pop up right now at this stage uh, across the board in Major League Baseball. We're going to zoom in on a couple of key uh, games that have piqued my interest from a betting perspective that may give us some betting value on the Wednesday, April 20th baseball slate. Uh, We're going to start with what could be a pretty interesting matchup between two young, promising pitchers as the Seattle Mariners take on the Cleveland Indians in what should be one of the better pitching matchups on the slate, on the card for Wednesday's action, you've got uh, Taiwan Walker on the mound for the Seattle Mariners. And Taiwan Walker has been uh, terrific so far this season, picking up where he left off from a very strong second half of the season last year with the Seattle Mariners team. I mean, he's made two starts so far for the Mariners, and Walker has allowed three runs uh, in 12 innings of work against Oakland and Texas combined in those two starts. Uh, he does have a very good track record as well against this Cleveland Indians lineup. And I've mentioned it before uh, about Cleveland. Sometimes they tend to struggle against better pitching. Uh, and that's certainly something they could be facing here with the way Walker uh, has looked coming out of the gate for Seattle. Uh, he dominated Cleveland. Uh, when he faced them last season twice, holding them to a single run in 14 innings over those two starts. So Walker was brilliant against this Cleveland lineup, uh, a lineup that was shut out by Stephen Matz and the New York Mets on Sunday. Uh, So we'll see if their bats can come back to life here against Walker, but I just have that feeling uh, they may not be able to because I'm impressed with Walker. Uh, I view him as a bet-on pitcher right now, but he's up against a guy that I consider a bet-on pitcher too uh, in Danny Salazar, the hard-throwing right-hander for the Cleveland Indians. He's been every bit as sharp so far uh, in his first two starts of the season for Cleveland. Salazar's allowed just a single run uh, in 11.1 innings of work against Tampa Bay and the Chicago White Sox in his first two starts uh, of the season. He's facing a Seattle lineup that's got a decent middle of the order when you think of Robinson Cano, Nelson Cruz, and Kyle Seeger, but you know they've been a little bit spotty in terms of consistent run production early in the season. Mariners have been held to three runs or less, actually, uh, in seven of their last nine games. So Danny Salazar, you know, a guy that his uh, uh, pitching arsenal uh, could be a trouble, uh, troublesome matchup here. Uh, for the Seattle Mariners, you know, the total in this game, you know, it looks like a seven and a half pretty much uh, on the opener. It's heavy juice toward the under, though. Seven and a half with about minus 125 now is what I'm seeing at bookmaker Chris currently with the total in this game. But I'm very interested in looking under the total in this matchup. I think we've got a good pitcher's duel here between Walker and Salazar. Uh, runs should be few and far between. So I'd look to play under the total between Seattle and Cleveland, two very good young starting pitchers in that matchup. Another one that piqued my interest on the Wednesday, April 20th Major League Baseball card uh, is the Houston Astros taking on the Texas Rangers. I mean, these are two teams that are expected to be battling it out throughout the season uh, for top spot in the American League West. And Doug Fister uh, is getting the start for the Houston Astros here. Uh, And he's been a guy that I've been repeatedly, repeatedly betting against early in the season. And the reason for that is because Doug Fister really underwent a lot of issues last year uh, with the Washington Nationals. I mean, it was just a ton of problems that he had in terms of staying healthy. Uh, He was on the DL for a large part of that season. And then when he did come back, he didn't pitch very well uh, at all for the Nationals. In fact, so bad uh, he was when he returned that the uh, Nationals were forced to use him as a reliever uh, just to see if he could maybe uh, work out the kinks and maybe work his way back toward being a starting pitcher once again uh, in their rotation. But that didn't happen. Sure enough, the Nationals not interested in uh, keeping Doug Fister beyond last season. So as a free agent, Houston Astros pretty much pick up Doug Fister cheap you know, just to see if this guy, uh, pretty much a reclamation project at this stage of his career with all the problems he's had in recent years, maybe he could uh, finally find some uh, lightning in a bottle, I guess you could say, find some late uh, magic and uh, maybe get back on track as a starting pitcher at the major league level. But to me, Doug Fister is a long, long way from being an effective starting pitcher right now at the major league level. And he certainly put that Uh, on display uh, in his first couple of starts uh, of the season, uh, allowing nine runs and 10.2 innings of work against Milwaukee and Kansas City in his first two starts. You know, now he's going to have to go in Arlington, a tough 
ballpark to pitch in, where the ball can fly out of the ballpark with a very solid Texas Rangers lineup. And it's worth noting, you know, you've got to be aware when pitchers uh, have a troublesome track record in a particular stadium and when you look at Doug Fister and his track record here in Arlington you know he's made two previous career starts here in this ballpark and he got absolutely crushed crushed in those two outings allowing 14 runs on 18 hits uh, in just nine innings of work in those previous two starts that Doug Fister has made here in Arlington so this has not been a ballpark that has treated him very kindly he could be up against it here uh, against the Texas Rangers and on the flip side you know the Rangers will be sending their ace Cole Hamels to the mound uh, and the veteran lefty you know just continues to just churn along uh, and get the job done at a very very consistent level uh, Texas a perfect 3-0 and already in Cole Hamels three starts so far here in the 2016 season Hamels uh, has given up just six runs uh, in 18.1 innings over those three starts against Seattle, the LA Angels, and Baltimore. So a very nice beginning to the season for the veteran lefty, uh, a guy that pitched well for Texas late in the season as well last year after they picked him up from the Philadelphia Phillies at the trade deadline. So really, Cole Hamels has been terrific for Texas. And when you think of the fact that they've been without you Darvish all last year and so far this year as well, having Cole Hamels pitch at this level uh, and, and sort of offset the fact that they've been without you Darvish for such a long period of time has really gone a long way to help this Texas starting rotation. So I like what I've seen from Hamels. You know, he made one start against Houston last season uh, and held them to three runs in seven Seven strong innings of work, a game that Texas won five to three. So I think uh, Hamels uh, should match up well here against the Astros. Astros have hit pretty well against lefties, but Hamels is a crafty lefty with a track record last year of shutting this, uh, of neutralizing uh, this Astros lineup. So, you know, Fister remaining high on the bet against list for me in terms of starting pitchers right now. Texas is about a moderate home favorite in this matchup. We're seeing them open at about minus 140. Uh, that number currently available at Chris with Texas in this game. I wouldn't mind laying the moderate price here with Texas. Minus 140 is not a bargain by any stretch. But I do like the advantage the Texas Rangers have in this game. Wouldn't surprise me to see them pick up the victory. And if you're a sports book, whether it's Vegas in Vegas or offshore, if it has access to team totals betting, maybe Texas team total over would be worth a bet here in this matchup as well. I think the Texas Rangers have the chance to get to Doug Fister and score some runs in bunches. Again, Fister, a guy with a very poor track record pitching here in Arlington. So it wouldn't surprise me to see Texas maybe have some offensive success, put up a few crooked numbers here in this game against Doug Fister. So I like Texas to get the victory there. You know, in terms of uh, quick hitter form, a couple other games that uh, interested me, Toronto, Baltimore, uh, AL East battle uh, in that one. R.A. Dickey against Ubaldo Jimenez, the probable starting pitching matchup there. Uh, you know, Dickey's just been a mixed bag right now, and, and the knuckleball really hasn't been dancing, so to speak, for uh, R.A. Dickey in his first two starts. He's really struggled at times. Ubaldo Jimenez is still a guy I don't fully trust. You know, a guy that I think is uh, still on the downslide of his career, the days of him being an ace uh, and maybe a Cy Young candidate early on. Uh, in his days with the Colorado Rockies. They're long behind him. I think Jimenez's best days uh, are behind him. So maybe a chance to see runs scored in that game. The total sitting at nine, slight juice toward the over there. Uh, I think we get runs in bunches there. Wouldn't surprise me to see uh, that game get over the total of nine runs. Jays and Orioles, two potent lineups as well. Might be able to have an advantage there uh, against some suspect starting pitching uh, in that particular matchup. How about the Mets and Phillies in the National League? You've got Bartolo Colon uh, taking on Jeremy Hell. Ellickson. What a job by Bartolo Colon so far this season for the New York Mets. Just when you think this guy's too old, just when you think he can't get any more overweight uh, than he already is, and he can't pitch well as a result, boy, he just proves you wrong. And so far, he's proving everybody wrong here with this New York Mets rotation. Bartolo Colon just doing a fantastic job uh, in his first few outings of the season. Uh, 2.38 uh, ERA for Bartolo Colon. Uh, in his first two starts of the season, holding Cleveland and Philadelphia to just three runs uh, in 11.1 innings of work uh, in those two starts combined. Uh, very impressive numbers from Bartolo Colon. He'll be up against Jeremy Hellickson. And, you know, Jeremy Hellickson's a guy for the Phillies that I really thought coming into the season could start out very well. He did. But against the Washington Nationals in his last start, Hellickson got uh, crushed, just got absolutely hammered. Six runs on seven hits and three innings of work, got knocked out of that game early uh, in a five in a nine to one Phillies loss uh, to the Washington Nationals. So uh, I'm going to sit back and see if Hellickson 
can regain his form because prior to that bad outing against Washington, he was really pitching very well uh, for the Phillies uh, and pitched very well in the spring too to uh, earn uh, the ace spot, I guess you could say, on this Philadelphia Phillies rotation. I'm interested to see if that bad outing uh, in Hellickson's last start uh, against the Washington Nationals, is it just a blip on the radar, something that he can bounce back from, or is this going to be a second straight uh, rough outing for Hellickson here against the New York Mets? And if it is, could be signs that there might be something up uh, in terms of Hellickson's durability moving forward. Maybe there's an injury on the horizon. Maybe he's going to be dealing with shoulder issues. To just go from having two great starts to pound it all of a sudden in his third start, it makes me think maybe an injury could be on the way and a stint on the DL for Hellickson. So I'm going to sit back, monitor this start that he makes uh, against the New York Mets. Uh, and and it, as for uh, Bartolo Colon, as I've said, hard to go against him right now. He's pitched well. So maybe a slight lean to the Mets in that game, but I'm more interested to sit back and observe to see if Hellickson can bounce back from that rough outing against Washington to see if that was maybe just a one-off or maybe a sign of things to come for him. So that is my look uh, at the MLB overnight lines for the baseball slate taking place on Wednesday, uh, April the 20th. Uh, It should be another interesting card. Lots of fascinating matchups. And I look forward to taking them all in uh, on Wednesday and uh, watching how they all unfold. So that'll do it for this video. I'm Ian Cameron. Enjoy the games and good luck.